Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Bridgewater Historical Society and our program today. A uh, few real quick things. Restroom is back there. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet floating around. We'd appreciate it if you could sign that at some point. And there's also, Jeanette has a list of all of our programs for the, uh, the rest of the season. So I'll pick up one of those too. Um, today we're happy to have Tom Giffen, president of the Vermont Old Cemetery Association here today. Now the VOCA was founded in 1958 to encourage the restoration and preservation of neglected and abandoned cemeteries in the state of Vermont. Some of our cemeteries date back to the 1700s. Um, Tom has been a member since 1984 and their president since 2001. He has two master's degrees in education as a foreman where I used to work said he's certified smart. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> the more I learn, the stupider I feel. <laughs> and he is a licensed history teacher. Um, he's worked with a lot of different community groups and really in the efforts to restore Vermont's almost 2,000 uh, cemeteries that we have around the state. Uh, he's also a member of the Sons of the American Revolution, First Families of Vermont, Mayflower Association. We should have him talk to our president. Too bad she wasn't here. Polly Timken, who's also has some associate with, association with that. He's the cemetery commissioner for Rutland City. He was recently presented with the Historic uh, Preservation Award from the Vermont Daughters of the American Revolution for his efforts in preserving Vermont's colonial burial grounds. Impressively, he is an eighth generation Vermonter, lives in uh, Rutland with his wife, and they have three children. So with that, I'd like to present Tom. Oh, thank you very much. First thing I always do, I've done a lot of presentations. How many of you are not members of our organization? Raise your hands. Up, keep them up. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Would you please pass these around to everybody? I, I do not charge for anything. All I ask is that people, I saw, hand there. I saw the, uh, people join our organization. It's 10 bucks a year, we'll get into that. Um, it's, uh, we're all volunteers. And I always ever ask is the more people to join, the better our organization. All the money goes to just the restoration of Vermont cemeteries. And Bridgewater, I know, has gotten some, a lot of help from Volk over the years. So when you apply for grants, it's nice to have a lot of people in Bridgewater being members is helpful. And I do have one grant application right there if anybody's interested in applying for, for your cemeteries. Again. Uh, this is our logo, which we've, been, we've had for a long time. Each one represents a period of time for what, what cemeteries look like. Okay. Nothing makes me madder than people who read PowerPoint slides. This is the only slide I will read. That this is a cemetery. Lives are commemorated, deaths are recorded, families are reunited, memories are made tangible, and love is undisguised. This is a cemetery. Communities accord respect, families bestow reverence, historians seek information on our heritage is thereby enriched. Testimonies of devotion, pride, and remembrance are carved in stone to pay warm tribute of a loved one. The cemetery is a homeland for family memorials that are a sustaining source of comfort to the living. A cemetery is a history of people, a perpetual record of yesterday, and a sanctuary of peace and quiet today. A cemetery exists because every life is worth loving and remembering always. I had a professor in college, and I always remembered this, what he told me. When somebody dies, you lose a library. And I always think of a cemetery as you know, something that's important. Communities should value it. And I've noticed in like, towns like Bridgewater, other small ones, how well their cemeteries are. You go to Burlington, you can't say the same thing. Next slide. Uh, we're talking, first of all, uh, funerals in Vermont and in New England especially, there was a procedure, there was a, um, there, there, people would go into debt for, for generations sometimes to make sure we the right clothes, you, you had rings, you had copious amounts of alcohol, especially if you're Irish, never mind. Um, but there was, there was everything, it was, it was a very big expense. And in Vermont, you see some people did not have the opportunity to have a lot of expense. What they would do is they, they, you'd see the, you'll see the field stones. Instead of because they could not afford a headstone. Go ahead. 
we talked a little about it. Our, we're nonprofit. Um, it's open to everybody, and we always, and all we do is to do rest is to help communities with their history. Good. Uh, we were founded by Leon Dean. Uh, he was a professor at UVM. He had a lot of health issues. He founded the Vermont Old Cemetery Association and the Vermont Folklore Society, if anybody's aware of that. Um, he was, a, he was quite, quite a instrumental in his passion for, for Vermont history and Vermont cemeteries. Uh, like we, basically, it was about our cemeteries date back to the 1700s. They're made of a variety of materials. Uh, marble, unfortunately, is one of our, the biggest issues we have, even in Washington, D.C., where a lot of the memorials are made of Vermont marble. Well, I think it was when uh, uh, Reagan was inaugurated, they had to redo all the back of the White House because the marble had deteriorated. There's big issues now with Arlington, with Lincoln Memorial, and other places because the marble with acid rain and the environment is becoming issues. That's, that's the gentleman who started VOCA. I'm not going to go through this. I'll just put it up there for now. Uh, this little this little bi bibliography on him. Um, he spent a lot of his time just working, trying to make it better for, for Vermonters and for for the uh, from with UVM. Okay. All right. Any person, anybody can become a member upon paying their dues. Um, we ha we have had fluctuations in membership, like everything else. We. I think our current membership is around 500, give or take. We've been up a lot higher, but uh, uh, the, we're entirely made of volunteers. Every dime goes to uh, 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 restoration and grants that we do. So we, we nobody is a uh, uh, takes nobody gets a salary, nobody gets any money. It's all volu it's all for tip a grassroots Vermont organization. If there ever was one. Don't. Hey, dues are moderate. Again, it's we're four, ten dollars per year, forty dollars for five years, two hundred dollars for individual life membership. One thing we have changed is, uh, back in the day, the communities would get a lifetime membership, and so I said, wait a minute. Chances are the community. This is a volcano going to happen. They're going to be around forever. So we have grandfather people in, but uh, we uh, only individuals can uh, have a life membership. We take our dues very seriously. <clears throat> So busy celebrating my 100th birthday, I forgot, sorry. We gave her a lifetime membership, by the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we are a great, we are an interesting group. Um, we are aficionados and, uh, and we, are, we, we have membership all, in almost all the states, Canada. Um, it's, it's amazing where people come from. One of the big issues we have, again, is, I mean, this is a cemetery in West Street that we have restored, but the purpose of cemetery is to encourage and restore a neglect and abandoned cemetery in Vermont. That's all we, and in Vermont, there's over 1,900 cemeteries. Of the 1,900 cemeteries, I mean, some are in great shape, some need some work, and some are, and, and have not been maintained for generations. Um, and so our goal is to reclaim them, to make communities available, of, uh, uh, aware of them, and uh, sometimes we, are, we do quite a bit as far as uh, legislatively. Um, there's been several, I've been privileged to a couple things where we have changed the laws regarding, for example, we, there was Volca that changed the law regarding to steal anything from a cemetery, believe it or not, like gates, uh, urns, things of that nature are stolen quite regularly. Uh, it is a felony in the state of Vermont to steal anything out of a cemetery. We were involved not that long ago with a cemetery gate that was crossed the line in Bennington, and uh, Dickinson was named on the gate. And it was a very long story. We uh, discovered that the gate was stolen from Emily Dickinson's gravesite, and we returned it. So I mean, it's, it, that's what we're dealing with. The history of the United States is history of Vermont, and the people who made the history are buried in Vermont's old cemetery, in cemeteries. That's what I say to everybody. We can't talk about Ethan Allen. You can't talk about Roberts Rangers. You can't talk about anything with the history of the United States without talking about Vermont and all these people that are, are uh, that made this history are in our old cemeteries. And if, if for that reason alone, we should be concerned about them. This is the only stone not from Vermont that I put in here, but I use it when I'm talking to, to high school and middle school kid children, students. This woman was the, uh, one of the women who mixed and applied the paint to disguise the Indians, disguise the Indians the, the, from the Boston Tea Party. 
Now, here, if you can't teach history from a cemetery stone with that stone, then you don't, shouldn't belong teaching history. But here's a case, here's a woman who was involved with the Boston Tea Party who, 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 did the, who painted the faces of, of the patriots that did that. And if you can't think that having this, this uh, marker is important, and can't think, oh, you can teach history from a cemetery, then I'm wasting my time. Ah, perpetual care. One of the problems we have in Vermont is like when you buy a plot or something, you say, oh, we got perpetual care. That doesn't exist. Especially now with the uh, advent of interest rates playing, you know, one percent or less. Um, unless you're, there's a couple of cemeteries who had uh, organizations who, in the communities, they invested very wisely in the 40s and 50s. And they literally have millions of dollars in their cemetery account. Uh, unfortunately, what's happened is the a lot of the perpetual care doesn't exist because the cemeteries aren't being used anymore. There's no income, and what they have for restricted funds is not paying anything. So that's, that's a big issue now with perpetual care. So, in fact, I saw a thing in the, in the bulletin at church today where they said that you know, the uh, only income they get is from new burials. If nobody dies and you're not getting any income looking for help. Good. Ah, oh, we are fun. Now, believe it or not, <laughs> we, uh, we've tried to have interesting speakers at our, at our meetings. Um, this was a um, um, uh, Williamstown Cemetery. Next slide, please. And this guy is our dowser. He looks like a dowser. He's from Pennsylvania. Anybody know where the world capital of dowsing is? In Danville, Vermont. Very, very good, Danville, Vermont. I have been. You ever been there? Yes. 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 You have that little thing out. It's about a little tiny house. And that's the world capital of dowsing. Well, this guy. Well, I'm kind of it. I still have that tie, by the way. Um, but the, uh, so I didn't believe it for a minute. Next slide. <laughs> so anyway, so that's Charlie Marsh, and he's, a, he's, our, he's been a member of Volker forever, too. So this guy showed us that with, the, that with dowsing is that if there was a memorial, if, if it, you see a stone that says a memory of, the body's not there. Well, we're going around with our, you can see our dow, you can't see that slide with our dowsing rods, and walk like this. And there was a buy. It would, I, I didn't believe it. We had the next slide. Have every old people doing oh, it? Oh yeah. Here, here we all are. People thought we were nuts. Everybody made it work except for one guy. He only had one arm. We gave him a pass. <laughs> but but we all did it. And sure enough, dowsing does work. I, I I still can't believe it. But we douse for graves, and uh, I've used it in Timoth a couple other places. And I don't know why. I didn't believe it for a second. I said, yeah, whatever. And but it did work. So if you, if you want to ever want to douse for graves, there is, there, it can be done. <laughs> if you have any questions, you know, feel free to raise your hand and I'll be happy to answer them. Grants. One of the things that we do, one of the things that Volk does, we offer grants to communities and groups to do the restoration. Um, I have a list of the, the cemetery representation, representatives for different counties. And uh, the, we go up to $750 now a a year per grant, and we try to, and so we try to get it out to as much as possible. Whatever money we take in, we try to give out. And uh, the, what we do is, if you want a grant, you there's a there's a I have an application there. Uh, we have our reps look at it. What you want to do, they send it to us for approval. We approve it every year. We do it always a year a year ahead, if you were. And uh, that's one of the main main um, reasons we exist is to help out with communities giving grants. Tom, what's the timeline on that? We would like to have it done in, 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 in that, that following year. However, if it's not done, if you contact us, we'll give you a break for, you know, but we're not that hard, we're not, if somebody's doing the work, we're not gonna say, absolutely not. So, but we will, we will give people a break. Well, what trouble is, I was a grant administrator for a while, and I got a lot of people wanting to do it. They filled out the paperwork, and, I, and uh, we did it, we, we got everything up, but they never followed through, because a lot of it has to do with volunteers getting people to do the work. When I do projects around and help communities out, first thing I say is you need to have the volunteers signed up, ready to go, and then I'll come and we'll do it. Volunteers make the difference. When are the grants due? We will be looking at them uh, this fall meeting. So for our meeting, which we'll get into in a minute, and I'll tell you about, we always look at, we'll, then we'll go over, the, the, the executive committee will look at them and make recommendations. Um, a lot of times we uh, don't have enough grants. We, we have more money than grants. 
So, which is, which is interesting. And some communities keep going over back to us all the time and they say, listen, if, they, if we have nobody else, we'll give it to them. Uh, we had two publications, I have one here, uh, that we, uh, the Burial Grounds of Vermont has a, was done, we have a listing and, and uh, uh, directions, information on, on, on all the cemeteries of Vermont, almost every one is in that book. We no longer ha are going to produce the book because technology has changed. We put it all on disk, um, and that's even technology is changing. So I do have a book there, one or two left, and we're selling the book, which is probably be a collector's item, and we also sell the disk. If anybody wants our information, I'll be happy to sell it to you. Uh, Stones and Bones, if anybody has a teacher or knows of a teacher, uh, that I have a few copies left of that. Wonderful resource, teaches how to use a cemetery for, uh, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a teaching history, teaching the community, um, uh, uh, the, commu the community's history also. Great, I mean, college students have you, college teachers have you, high school teachers, elementary school uh, teachers have used it. It's a great resource. I use it all the time. I have a few copies left. Everybody's interested. A great Christmas present, and we sold a lot of them because of the, it's just such a, a fun thing to have a unit, how to, how to teach um, uh, uh, history through, uh, through cemeteries. It's also good for, for an individual because it has so much information in it. Howard Coffin was one of the people that also helped us do it. Oh, my lovely, what? Let's back up. Please. Okay. <laughs> That's a, that's a new slide. Okay, that was, no, that's what. It's not. No, that that was no, that's at that bottom thing. No, the uh, the the uh, picture with my my photography when I was being really a photographer era. <laughs> okay, I didn't see that. That's a new. That was just put on there recently. Okay, next well, slide. Next slide. <laughs> we have two meetings a year. Um, first Saturday in May and the first Saturday in October, which is per our bylaws. But what's the first Saturday in May? What is the first Saturday in May in Vermont? Green update. Green update. Unfortunately. I made the mistake, uh, one of my first meetings that I chaired was, can we like change the date from Green Up Day to, to second Saturday in May? And I was booed down because we were here before Green Up Day, they need to change the date of Green Up Day, I was told. <laughs> so I need to say, we still meet the first Saturday in May, and I don't see that ever changing in my lifetime. We always encourage press. This was in Vermont Life, which we no longer have, apparently. Um, it, we, it, that's when, again, membership has spiked at that point. We must, that was a while ago. But uh, we, we, we were in the press quite regularly regarding cemetery uh, issues. Want to say anything? <laughs> Several people in the room may have been involved with this. We all know who you are. Um, what a good looking guy. Anywho, that, went, that particular picture went. Nation, one nationwide. Anybody familiar with the Aldrich Cemetery? Raise your hand if you. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Um, what happened was there's a, there was a small cemetery called the Aldrich. Um, oh, what's the rest? Kendall, thank you. Cemetery, and somebody bought the property and they decided they wanted to move the cemetery. Um, it made it made it went to the Supreme Court next. <laughs> so I got called and I and I just next slide please. We went to court in Woodstock, and that's Judge Ertl. I think it was probably was the most people ever in the history of Woodstock at probate court. Her hands were shaking, we were there, uh, to try to prevent this from happening. What we discovered was there was no um, laws to prevent this. And I, so I remember testifying, I said, so if I want to have a pay for view and dig up Ethan Allen and have it in my backyard, there's nothing to stop me. There, no, there were no laws in Vermont. We have laws for 7-Elevens coming to Vermont, but we had no laws regarding removing a cemetery. Hmm. Anybody recognize this guy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, there, was a, there was a soldier buried there, so the, 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 the VFW and the other veterans group came out in force to, so, to try to protest the movement of the cemetery. Um, go ahead. Oops, back up then. I'm sorry, the last slide. Back up. So basically what happened was, to make a long story short, was uh, it went to the Supreme Court. A lower court said they couldn't do it. The Supreme Court ruled in favor of the plaintiff. Um, the cemetery was moved. Um, 
he, the, 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 my understanding was the house was supposed to be built there, never was, but the cemetery was moved. But because of that, we have new legislation in, in Vermont where if you have an interest in cemeteries, as far as you're the historical society, the descendant, other people, so in other words, you can't just do it without approval. Plus, if you are going to do it, you have to have an archaeological uh, dig, basically, to have them, which is very expensive. So I don't think you'll see that again. The only other time I've been involved with a cemetery that was uh, moved was there was one, there was a Porsche soul that was, that was uh, Jewish that was buried in the middle of a field up by where Walmart is in St. Albans now, and we absolutely supported moving that because, I mean, to a, to a, to a, a established cemetery. But overall, that's the only time I've ever seen others, except for public good, like a bridge or a road, you don't see cemeteries moved. So but that, was, that, was a, that was a unique one for me. So one of the things we do, because communities we talked about, perpetual care is a thing of the past. However, even though they're getting, judges aren't sentencing people to uh, as much community service they used to be, uh, each county has Department of Corrections work crews that are doing work. I mean, Burlington especially is like ever, uh, the, um, uh, Lakeview, Greenmount, and some of the largest cemetery are maintained by Department of Corrections work crews. They have the contract to keep the mowing and things done. So we have done work, even like they need, for a day, you need a group to come in and do some work. They are available uh, either at no cost or a very reasonable cost. Good. Here's an example. Dave Bellini runs the uh, uh, work crew out of Burlington. He's also a VOCA member. And so he called me. I was at work. This, this gentleman was a, was a Civil War doctor. And uh, that stone has been out, I mean, it's solid granite, probably weighs, I don't know, 2,000 bucks, it weighs a lot. And it's been sitting there for generations. I, so he called me up and he wanted to fix it. This is an example. So, so I'm on the phone with him. So you can see the, the, this is his work crew doing the work. So you see the balls on a couple planks. Remember what I said, how much is solid granite, so imagine what it weighs. Keep going. So he's rolling it up the planks, and this, pen, this has to go into the hole, okay? So the hole's right here, okay? Pointing with his finger. I, so I'm waiting for the, for the scream when it gets killed. However. However, we did it. It looked nice. So but those are some of the examples. That, that's one of the more extreme ones, but it was kind of a fun one because as he's doing so next, so that was nice. So meanwhile, while he's doing this, I get a phone call from this, this, this same cemetery, and she was complaining because her great, great aunt or something, um, uh, Stone was disarray and wanted to know if we could help doing it. So, so I said, well, give me directions. I'm on the phone again with the work crew. I said, so I said, tell me where it is. So we found where it was, and so ironically, there was somebody on this guy's work, I mean, talk about the stars aligning. There was a gentleman on this guy's work crew that was a stonemason. So we found the stone and we put it back together for her. But these are the things that we do. I mean, doesn't that look nice? And again, it was a, it was a perfect storm though. Everything aligned. She called me, the crew was there at a stonemason. It was perfect. I gotta get that slide out of there. That's, okay, anywho, the, the, the rear end not uh, withstanding. But this is when we, I, this is a cemetery I first started restoring, God, six, seven years ago. Terrible shape, it was West Street Cemetery in Rutland. And I got involved because somebody called me and said, how could I be the president of the Vermont Cemetery Association and the cemeteries in Rutland are so pitiful, and they were. So I started, well, we started doing it. And we, Do you need um, a permission? I mean, who owns the stones then? The, we're, Good, very good question. First of all, if there's a cemetery in the city, town, or wherever, it's depending if it's an association, the association makes the rules. If it's like Bridgewater has a town cemetery, it's the, if you're the, the, sec, the com, uh, cemetery commissioners, in lieu of them, it's a select board that makes the decision. You're absolutely right. The stone belongs to the descendants. So I think that, that's their property. Uh, the example I give is my great grandfather was Seth Willie, or great great grandfather Seth Willie Hatchgiffen, and uh, 
my, he's buried in Green Mountain Cemetery in Burlington, and there was some brush growing around that my father, who's 89, and his sister, who's 91, had to get permission, had to give their permission to allow that to be done. However, the cemeteries that we're working are abandoned. Um, I've never had anybody but say thank you. There were some descendants, but you're absolutely right. I, the only authority I have is from the, in, in my city, I'm, I'm the commissioner, so I have my authority to work in the cemeteries. But as far as you're absolutely right, the stone itself belongs to the descendants. But when you're dealing with a six, no, somebody who was born in 1690, died in you know, 1740, who, I mean, not that many people around. But it would be nice if there were somebody that would, uh, then I'd ask them to help pay for it. You know? <laughs> but, but how far do you have to go to, to find the descendant then? I mean, uh, there, uh, there's a slide coming up, I'll tell you how, what we did. But as a rule, it's been a lot of times, especially in today's society, we're so mobile. It's very hard. I mean, maybe in Bridgewater, there could be people who know people who know people. But as a rule, I've never had anybody um, in all the cemeteries I've worked in ever come up to me and I'll say that they were upset that the work that we had done because what we're doing is just doing restoration. But there, being that being said, it's up to the community giving us permission to go in and restore their cemetery. Tom, Tom excuse me. Then, theoretically, in order to restore a stone, you should get permission from the family. Theoretically, but if you're, if this, but, but, if the, but if the town is responsible for maintenance of the cemetery, yeah. and they are, yeah. and stones are falling over or stones are broken, you have, a, you have the right to do that. Okay. But the stone, but, but as far as the ownership is that. So if they want to come back and say, well, what did you do? I said, we fixed your stone. If you want to say, well, maybe you should give us this $350, which is what's the going rate is for epoxy. Or we could put it back where it was. <laughs> or put it back where it was. <laughs> Oh, I have never had anybody ever say a word about the, the work. They, usually people are very thankful for work. But again, if you're in, like, like say in a established uh, active cemetery now, if the stone falls over or anything else, who fix it? The, the cemetery, com the commissioners, or the people who run the association will come in with a bucket load or whatever and fix that stone. So, but I mean, but the thing is, you always got to be respectful. It is somebody's final resting place. It is somebody's descendant. So, but yeah. One thing we do a lot of is, is um, a lot of times the stones have been so deteriorated, broken, missing, stolen, whatever. Um, uh, what I do is we do veteran replacement stones. Is anybody familiar with this process? If you have a veteran in your cemetery and the stone has deteriorated, gone, whatever, there's a, you can go online, there's a, there's a form to fill out and it's kind of a lot of work. Next slide, please. And I still have that tie too. Oh, anyway, and you uh, uh, fill it out. They will deliver a stone to you, but even that's a procedure. I have, I have a system now where it's delivered to a local funeral home. I have the Department of Corrections people, uh, work crew deliver it to the cemetery. I have the middle school children put it back in place. And if you're interested, this thir coming Thursday, I have a Revolutionary War stone that had been missing and it's taken me four years to get it replaced. It arrived a week ago and we're having quite the ceremony at, West, at North Main Street Cemetery in Rutland where the motorcycle Vermont Patriot. Vermont Patriot Guards are coming with 20 plus people with flags, the DAR, the, uh, uh, the mayor, political pundits, um, the history, I mean, it's going to be quite the event. And it's, uh, the, the VFW is coming with the Honor Guard, the Legion's coming. It's going to be very, very interesting. And, that, and, the, and the stu again, the same thing is the students are going to take the granite stone, bring it up where it belonged, and replace it. And the students have done the research on the soldier. They're going to be reading this. And um, it should be quite, quite the show. So if you're around Rutland, and it's going to be at 1030 on Thursday at the North Main Street Cemetery. Next slide. There it is all that, again, we get, if you are gonna do a replacement stone for one in Bridgewater or anything else, we, I, you can do anything you want. You have all different types of stone you can get. I do granite stones because it'll last a lot longer than marble. And even the marble ones that have been replaced over the years, I've replaced them because you can't read them anymore. I mean, unfortunately in Vermont with acid rain and with the weather and, um, the marble stones are very, very, even today, it's very difficult to read. 
This is one that I'm particularly proud of. This guy, when I talk about with the, with the students, I always bring them to this, this gentleman's stone. Brasilia Dewey was present, was, was present when Major Andre was hung at West Point. He was at Saratoga. He was at many of the major battles of the Revolutionary War. And here's his stone in West Street Cemetery in Rutland, Vermont. Now, if you, now there's a case, you talk about history, and, you're, and you're, that, that, that gentleman saw a heck of a lot of this. He saw, the, he saw the birth of the United States. And there's his monument in, in West Street Cemetery. Again, a lot of times with, with communities, it's very, very difficult to get volunteers. So when I started my restaurant, if you saw the cemeteries that before, this, every stone in this place was either knocked down, broken, or, 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 or missing. Uh, now every stone has been replaced and fixed. It look, if you look at that, that looks just this picture. What I did was, who can I get that's big, that can help me, and won't, and won't complain? <laughs> Next slide. And there they are, and uh, they came and they, we did the entire cemetery North Main Street, and we did every stone, straightened every stone, and some of these stones, you can tell, they're heavy, and they go down, they're deep. Uh, and we did the whole thing in the morning wow. with, with a castle. Again, I called the coach, they got to do community service, what can you do for me? And they came and they did a heck of a job. There they are. In fact, they even painted the back wall. Somebody had painted obscenities on that wall. They painted the whole wall, and uh, it was amazing the work that they did. And every year now, I have groups of kids that come in. We'll show them that. Thought you get rid of that one. I said, well, we also do, we also do surveys. This was in Dorset. We go around. People ask to go around and check the slot cemeteries out and see how, what work they need. I mean, Dorset had a lot of cemeteries, but they were they were not in that bad of shape. Yes, the community had taken care of them over the years. All right. I still have that tie. I love these tie shots. Guys, God, this is... Okay, that guy on the left is a uh, sheriff of Belfast, Maine. And what happened was I got a call from him as a member, as president of Volca, that they had found two stones this person had was going to assisted living and he uh, was a very well-known writer, and he was, he was an airline pilot and everything else. And if you're interested, you find a story online. But uh, he was a photographer, and, and they found these two stones that he had stolen from um, Northfield, Vermont. And, they, and so they, we wanted to return them to us. So he didn't know where they came from. We discovered they, where they came from, and we uh, made arrangements for him. Next slide, I think is... Okay, so what happened was he, he, so he had the stones in his, outside his office in Belfast, Maine. And while we, he, we were talking about how we're going to return them back to Vermont, somebody stole one again. So it went nationwide. He, the sheriff was rather annoyed. It went nationwide, and about a week later, the stone appeared in front of a Catholic church in Belfast, Maine. <laughs> well, I asked him, why did the guy take the stones? And the, the answer was he thought somebody would steal them. I can't figure that out. <laughs> So, so he delivered, this is the outside of the Correctional Center. I'm the assistant superintendent of the Marble Valley Correctional Center. He delivered them like a week before Christmas. I was going to meet him halfway, and, you know, so he would have to. And, you know, he drove all the way down from Belt, which is a long drive. And I said, well, what the, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I said, wait a minute. I said, are you getting paid for this? You know, he started smiling. I said, he goes, yeah, I'm going to New Hampshire to go shopping later. He goes, so it wasn't, wasn't out of the goodness of his heart that he was doing it. So I had to laugh. But the fun part was, we brought, we, I found the cemetery with the help of our organization where the stones belonged. We literally found the descendants of the people who were there. They were there to receive the stones. So it was quite a story. I felt really good about it. Then I got a call a year later. They found another stone in this guy's garage. But luckily it was from Maine that he had taken it, not from Vermont. But it was a heck of a story, and I had a lot of fun with it. And uh, I give the, the, sh the sheriff, he took a lot of, he was very, adamant that it was going to come back to Vermont. So, and if you go to the um, uh, Norwich, or Northfield rather, no, Norwich, I'm sorry, these were Norwich stones, not Norwich, they were from Norwich. The Norwich Historical Society, they have the stones in there, in their historical, so with, this, with the story. That's the whole story, I'm not going to go into it, but uh, it, it just basically how it was stolen, and then re-stolen, and how we put it we back in place. It was a fun, it was a really fun story. 
One of the big things we have in it, unfortunately, uh, is vandalism. I still, to this day, I don't understand why people do this. Now, ironically, this is at, at Norwich University. Now, now, I got a feeling they weren't deer hunters that did this. It's in the, my son was in, old, was in, was in Boy State, and uh, uh, he brought me out to the middle of the soccer field. There was that stone, and I said, oh, well, that's kind of vandalism, I guess. Next slide. And unfortunately, in Vermont, I think I see more incidents of vandalism than, any, than anything else in cemeteries. I don't understand why. I wish you could tell me. We did a project at West Rutland last fall, and two weeks later, somebody had came in or someone's and, and knocked over 30 stones that we had fixed. We've, well, the, the good news is I went back this spring with a crew. We repaired every stone. So anyway, so ironically, last uh, May, the first, the, our May meeting was in Norwich, across from the university. So I walk in, there, now there's the stone. And uh, again, they had, that's in their historical society. I recognize immediately what the woman did was, uh, the historical society, they had this woman who was a, a member of the community. She also was an artist and did work in, in the granite industry. She took a, she took a Rub a sketch of the stone. Is that a good looking guy there? Okay, keep going. <laughs> Who's laughed? <laughs> and that was what it looked like when I went with my son back in 2006. And what they did, look what they did. Oh, Isn't that amazing? They talk about a community coming together. They, put, it, they brought the, put the cemetery back. Now look what it was on the left. The new fence. New stone, that was when they had the bullet holes in it. And I put it back the way it was, and uh, I was very, very impressed with the community. And, and they, they donated, my understanding was basically, to do that would be, I, I can't imagine what it would cost, I mean, thousands of dollars. And they, they, it was a very small amount of money that they paid to have it done. But here they have that one, and this is one of the founding fathers and mothers of, uh, Norwich, of uh, Northfield, Vermont. Um, what do you do with the original stone when you no, that's that, in that one, if you go back a slide, Barbara, they put it in their historical society. Uh, controversial, what I do, and we, we have Lon Tog, what I do in the city cemetery with the, we, with the um, approval of the city, because some cemeteries, when they replace the stone, they remove the stone. So I had mixed feelings on that. So what I have done and what I continue to do is the stones that were, when we put replacement stones, we put the broken ones behind there so people can see why we did that. Aesthetically, it doesn't look as nice as, I mean, as that one did, but I just, have a, I just think, you know, well, people should see what we're doing. But that, that's a really nice, I mean, you go from that I mean, what a, what a nice, you talk about community doing, coming together, and that was, so. Uh, again, this is what, this is West Rutland Pleasant Street Cemetery. We had done, we had repaired every stone in that cemetery, and I just finished, this was, we just finished in April. We went back, all this, wherever you see a board or anything else, that was, those stones were, were vandalized. A lot, of, a lot of Revolutionary War soldiers that were there. Unfortunately, vandalism is the issue, and that's what I keep telling, that's why when I work in, in cemeteries, I always bring a lot of children and students and young adults with me to work. First of all, they're a lot stronger than I am. Secondly, they don't complain as much. And then I also want them to see what's going on. And they, like when I took the MSJ football team and, and they, uh, there was some ne'er-do-well happened walking through the cemetery when I was, we were working. And they said, they better not touch a stone or we're gonna you know, take care of him. I said, guys, no, 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 they're fine. He's walking through, you know. But you gotta get people involved. This was another one from the same thing. They have since fixed that one also, but I just put that in. This is when somebody knocked off. Again, somebody put their shoulder, kicked it. And again, same thing. Well, that's gonna be a tough one to fix. I don't, that's gonna take a lot of work. Another thing I do, and we're positive, is I, every year I go down, for 11 years, I go down to Manchester. Everybody know where Hildeen is? Well, next to Hildeen is the Delwood Cemetery. And unfortunately, it was this Friday, I was not able to do it through a family commitment, but the, uh, the 
next slide, please. The, 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 the uh, Floodbrook School kids, students, they, they, okay, they camp out as Civil War soldiers at Hildeen. They have been studying about the Civil War soldiers in their school. And then they come and they all, they all march. The next day, that, that, that day they live, they live at Hildeen in tents. It's always something bad happens. A tornado goes through or her wet, cold. One day it was literally the coldest day of the year since the Civil War, which is hysterical. But what they do is um, they have the Southerners, the Northerners, they have the hats, and they, they've been studying about their Civil War soldiers. So then they, they, they camp out. The next morning I show up at 9 o'clock. We march the, now three quarters of a mile to Delwood Cemetery. The historian for Hildeen comes out, says more talks about the... Um, uh, uh, about the Civil War soldiers of Manchester. Then I get up there and I do my spiel. Of course, the kids are really thrilled. They listen to the story and they slept really well all night long. They, they're wet, they're cold, they're hungry, they're marching to a cemetery. So I get in there and I always tell well, everybody stand up. We're gonna, we go find every Civil War soldier that they've been talking about. And we have buckets of water and brushes. And I do my spiel about cemeteries and stones and the importance of cemeteries. And the kids have been doing this for 11 years. I do a presentation at Castleton, and uh, the, and uh, some of the, the the students that were there said, "I remember you. You I was getting old, because you were you know you were part of this. The kids love it. They come up with their brushes, their buckets. Uh, one one of the ones that can't. I mean, you see the kids with their hats. I love it. But one of the ones we started was Captain Dudley. He was a very famous Manchester Civil War soldier." And that's his stone there. Now, when we started the whole project, this is a few years ago, you couldn't even see the, the swords, the cap, none of that. But every year, we go with brushes and water and clean the stone. So people ask me, what, will, what cleans the stone? Water and brushes you know, do a great job. And I bring, I always talk about the Delwood Cemetery as an example of how well it works. And, it, and we have done so well with the Civil War stones. We're now doing the, rev now, like that one there, we're now doing the Revolutionary War stones. So it works fine. Uh, I have reclaimed several cemeteries. Um, again, I use different groups that I can. Big guys, preferably, and girls. Next slide. This was abandoned. It's behind the school. It was the House of Correction Cemetery in, in, in Rutland and where the uh, bike path, anybody even found the bike path story we have in Rutland? It's along the bike path and uh, it had been abandoned and we restored all the stone, put it back up. Next slide. The, the, you can tell it's a lot of work. The football team came, and, in, and they all helped. In addition to that, I had the Stafford Technical Center. They made a, uh, kia, or a sign with the name of everybody who's buried there, which was controversial. We were talking about, should we put the names of the people that were there? And I said, just because you, you were at the jail, I mean, and you died there, it, what's, it's, oops, back up again. But uh, that's A.J. Merrill. Everybody knows A.J. on the left. And this is the coach of the football team, John Casarino, at the time. And the mayor. Oh, yes, Mayor O'Leary's there. That's right. No, he was an alderman. He was a mayor. Next slide. Oops. That's right. You're right. So also, I needed them for another project. Next slide. We're, we planted daffodils all along the fence line to make it look nice. Now this was another one, I couldn't pick this up, it was vandalism. And that thing probably weighs 300 pounds or so, 250, 300. So I asked the coach, can you give me four, three or four guys to help me put this back up? <laughs> AJ's over there, there they are. But, but they were very proud to do it. But again, I have rest, we have restored a lot of this. But again, a lot of it has to do with, if you, now if you saw some of the beginning slides, remember all the stones were knocked over and broken? Those are those stones behind me, all restored. But they were, they were pretty proud of themselves, I think. I look at, probably only need like two of them, maybe three. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that half the team there, you know? Another thing I do, I've been, in fact, I'm doing this on Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I'm doing one in Wallingford, one in, and two in Rutland. We've been doing this for over a decade. Um, I've been doing this with the end of the year project with the, with the Rutland Middle School students who with David Cornwell and Ted Lingard, history teachers. And what they do is they come in every year and we have, with their help, we have done an amazing job. We, take, we epoxy, we straighten, we haul brush. The first couple of years we did it, there was so much brush 
the city kind of yelled at me because we held it outside the fence and it was it was it was it would fill this room. It was that much. We did so much work. It had been a bit, it had been in such disarray. The kids have been great. I can't. I never. It's just wonderful. They get kind of carried away sometimes, but yes. <laughs> Here we're putting again. Here's a case. This was, this was a year or two ago, and again, broken stone. The kids. I make sure the kids do the work. My whole point is, I can do it. I want the. I want the students to do it. I want them to feel ownership of it. I want them to know they're doing the work. Oops! And showed all together, did it? Well, was that stone epoxy? Yes, I epoxied it, and you can see some of the epoxy stuff down below there. Um, and we propped it up with boards to hold it in place. And I was just, in fact, I was in that cemetery a couple days ago. It looked great. Here's another one they're fixing. They, so you can see it was lying. And they put it all back together again. Again, boys and girls, they all, I, what I do is, they, it's kind of funny because when you have, here's a good group, usually about 20 students. So I have, you have the brush, the, the brush clearing group, the stone straightening group, the moose group, and the group that I affectionately call the butterfly watching group. You know, like a tea ball, you see the kids are looking at the butterfly, ball flies over, but overall the, the students have been wonderful and they get, a, they get, a, they like doing this. In fact, this particular program, you, know, you have to sign up for it. Uh, for the last 10 years, it's the first program to fill up because they only have so many limited spaces because the students want to do this. And since we've been doing it, the vandalism has about dropped away. And those are some very old 1700 stones that we're, they're carefully putting back in place. This is one we did uh, in August of 2000. God, is it possible? This is, again, you got to use whatever crews you have. Comcast, um, have, they do community service. This, this, well, I got involved because they wanted a grant from VOCA. I said, what do you need a grant for? Because this stone here that we're working on, the gentleman there, well known, when Lafayette came to America, he was one of the bodyguards for Lafayette. And his stone was falling over and, and this crew came in and we did the whole thing on a Sunday morning. And it was amazing. There's his stone all repaired. And if you look at the, it was a big cemetery. You look around, we, we straightened every stone, weed whacked the entire cemetery, cut all the brush around it, fixed the gate, and we were out of there by 11.30. We got there, we got there about quarter of nine. And that, that shows you what we did. That's, when you have a group of volunteers, especially you know, a big group of guys and girls, whatever, it lots of a big group, but when we got there, every, you can see, every one of those stones was crooked. We straightened every one of them. And we fixed all of them. I got a call from Center, this is Center Rutland. That's, if, you go, if you know Rutland at all, where the town, right across from Evergreen Cemetery is the town, is the, uh, town hall. That, that cemetery needs a lot of work. You never notice they wear the same shirt. <laughs> oh, anyway, so we came in again with a Comcast crew. They came in with 25 guys, 10 trucks, uh, they came in with a with a weed whack with a, uh, a shredder. It was amazing the work that we did. That believe it or not, there were some stones in the middle of that. We took all that off. They did a great job. I can't, you know. Now, if you notice, everyone was wearing a tie. Well, they, <laughs> what happened was this: is I work for a living. I did the, so. What I do is I take a few hours off. I'm dressed like sometimes I'm dressed like this. I'm wearing a tie, so. And to honor me, they all wore ties that day as we got done. <laughs> I laughed because we all had ties on. So it was pretty funny. But there was a Comcast guys. I can't, I don't go to the well that often. Every year they'll give me at least one or two projects. And they come in with a crew of men. They get one, two, three, four. I mean, and the work that they do is amazing. And they love doing this. They love doing this kind of work. So again, if you have a project, so then we talk, whoops, we have a, if you have a project you want to do, and, you know, let me know, I can contact the guys. They, they have crews all over the state, and they, they will do the work. People talk about what to clean your stones with. The only thing we advocate as an organization, other than um, just basically a brush and water, is this chemical called D2. It's, bi it's biologically friendly. It works with the environment. It doesn't cause any problems. 
Oh, what you do is just see, if you see the difference, you spray it on the stone and walk away. It's pretty pricey, it's like 25, 30 bucks a gallon. But if you're looking for your own cemeteries or whatever, it's low maintenance, you spray, walk away, and it'll work. And it does a nice job. I've did, did, used it a lot. I'm very happy with the results. A lot of our organization has used it. It is pricey, but um, this is not a plug for to go out there and buy their stock. But I have been very, it's, we have been very happy with D2, and it's also recommended by a lot of the uh, cemetery groups. Um, what is it mainly dealing with? Uh, like, uh, if you've got lichen. Oh, yeah. Lichen, the acid rain. If you look here, you can see how dark the stones are. Yeah. And you see here, it'll, it cleans the stone. If it's, I did one that's, uh, I was, that I was really worried about. I didn't want to touch it with soap or water, or with a brush and water. And I sprayed it, and it took everything off. It, it, it made it white. It cleaned the lichen off. It was, yeah, it does a nice job. In fact, it's recommended by the, uh, uh, all the restoration people too. It's not the, there's a couple other products out there. Wet and Forget is one of them. We, we don't know what the long-term effects of that, would, that is. This we know, and we as VOCA as an organization support D2, you can buy it. You can buy it. Um, what I do is I have several gallons. What I do, and I when I have my, what I'll be using next week with this or this week with the students, I uh, have like a dozen stones. I'll say spray these dozen stones and, and then come back. Yeah. On um, old uh, uh, marble stones, I notice that it is often this black stuff. I would guess that's a blue green alga. The black, yep. The black, it, I think, is caused by a lot of it's caused by acid rain. I've been told. And but this D2 will bring that will, it will be it will help to brighten the stone, and you can tell by the difference, which, which I guess kills the alga, it must be what it is. Um, do you have you noticed are there any studies that suggest that uh, shade trees may keep the stones too moist? Yeah, well, and depending they're on pr pr promoting possibly for, this out. Vermont has a te Vermonters have this tendency to plant trees net right next to their houses and in cemeteries. Trees do not belong in cemetery. At the Delwood Cemetery, which is a gorgeous garden cemetery with ponds, they have these beautiful bu spruces. And that, and the, uh, when we had the uh, bad styrene and, and other windstorms, uh, those spruces blew over and did, did thousands of dollars of damage to the stones. Mm -hmm. Pine trees, I mean, I, I have two or three cemeteries now that I'm dealing with, one in Middletown Springs, one in my own cemetery, about 50 foot pine trees with branches. When they fall, they'll do a lot of damage. Um, but if you have a shaded, like the one in Wallingford, ironically, it was way up in the middle of the woods. It had no lichen or anything else, which was funny. But other ones, I just, the one I was in Hampton, New York, uh, on uh, Golf Course Road, and that cemetery, it was like, it must have a lot of moisture. There was no trees to speak around it, but every stone was covered with lichen. So it has to do with the, the, wherever they are, but it certainly does have impact. Absolutely. You're 60 years old this year. And I always throw this, we always go, if you ever have, want to have a fun trip, go to the Hope Cemetery and take the tour. It's worth it. Everybody been to Hope Cemetery? Mm -hmm. how, many, how many had the tour? Was it, was it worth it? I mean, again, a lot of uh, oh, amazing work. Yeah, we've seen this. Yeah. This guy died, and he was a race car driver. He didn't die in a race car accident. He died in a car accident. But they had a contest to see who could do the best monument. If you climb under, if you look underneath, it has the muffler, the whole nine yards. It's two thirds the size of a car, but it's a beautiful, you know. I brought, uh, this is the one I always bring up. Now this guy here was, a lot of them were Italian artisans and they were, a lot of them would die of uh, silicosis from the lung from inhaling the granite dust. And a lot of them knew they were dying. So they do their own monument. So this gentleman was, he was dying, so he carved his monument until so they had the unveiling and the planting after he passed. Now obviously a very talented carver. Now his wife was there and the, the individual lying prostate looks just like the deceased. However, the woman looks nothing like his wife. <laughs> and the guy, there's a doctor that owned the plot the other side, and apparently the buttocks of the young lady were very carved very pronouncedly. He said, I don't know, I want to look at that through eternity. So he had to give him a new plot. <laughs> so I just put that in there because it's always good for a laugh, you know? <laughs> 
We do not, once in a while I'll get involved, people call me about Native American burials, I do not get, we do not get involved, the controversy is too great, no way in heck am I touching that with a 10 foot pole. I have never seen that, I always wanted to, but I've never been to that particular place. We can make a difference. I don't want to get too long in the tooth here. Uh, again, this was a totally abandoned cemetery. It was a poor farm cemetery. Nobody cared. There were junk cars in the middle of it. The brush was so thick you couldn't even see it. I thought I would embarrass the city. I had uh, Henry Sosinski donated a stone regarding these people who were buried there. Um, it, where it's located is, you know where the Rutland High School is? up on the hill where the, where the transfer, AKA dump, is located is where this is. So I, so I put the stone prominently displayed so people would see it when they came up to the transfer station. Okay. In memory, so I'll get into that a little bit, but thinking that people would say something, nobody said anything. So anyway. Memory of Rutland's poor, the here at the poor farm, somebody rest in peace. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see God. This is, now, what I did was I got community involved. I got the Stafford Technical Center made a kiosk, which I copied off the Pittsfield's kiosk. They did all the work. We restored the entire cemetery, put new fence around it. And I think the next slide has what it looks like today. What a difference. That's what a community can do. The only thing, I didn't pay for anything, except for my, a lot of, like, sore muscles. But back please. Um, but this is the, but that, that, this is the case. You saw this original slide. You couldn't tell there was anything there. Um, but now we restored it. And what would have happened would have been in another two or three years, the, the, the transfer station would have taken it over and it'd be in somebody's memory. There once was a cemetery there. But now we have, again, a controversial was we put, we put the names of all the deceased on the more, because same thing was, do we want people to know who died? No, my thing was you die at the, no, you die at the poor farm, you're buried at the dump, you know, but uh, it, we, we, we put everybody's name that we could find who was buried there, and we put their name we, as they should be remembered, so. I just got involved in this a couple weeks ago. Uh, that gentleman here was a Bunker Hill uh, a Revolution War veteran. You see what's happening. I got called by the Weybridge Select Board to see if I could help. We were on, I don't know if anybody see the thing on TV today. Yeah, I got them in there, but it's very bad. I uh, just, the UVM is coming in September to do, to try to do some restoration work and move, but I, I was standing over here. It's, it's scary. I mean, it's very scary. And there already are remains that have fallen down there. And this is Hampton, New York. Even though, okay, I got crap from my organization because it's not Vermont. Hampton was one smart, so. So we, but again, this is a case we came in, every one of these stones you see that's crooked, next slide, I don't know how many slides were on this one. Whoop, back up then, please. Okay, we did, we came in with a crew, the whole town came. Every stone in that cemetery was straightened and repaired. And there probably was 300 of them. And we came in, I don't know how many people were there, but I, I was talking to a gentleman before we started. We ran out of, board, when the stones are broken, you have to have boards to hold them in place. We ran out of boards, the guy goes, oh, I'll be right back. He goes down to his local sawmill, comes back with a whole truckload of boards that he just, he just cut for us. But this can be done. I mean, now the, commu I, the community is, has two other cemeteries they're doing, and they're restoring those two. It, it, when a community cares, this is what can happen. Okay, next slide. Okay, now, if you don't have rules in your cemetery, this can happen. One of these days, nobody did this, right? One of these days, I'm going to show this slide. Somebody's going to be very insulted. I'm be, I'll be full of the sign. Um, if you don't have rules, for what goes in the cemetery, people can do what they want. Now the next slide, not yet, that I... Yep. I the next slide I'll show you what, what is, I don't want to offend anybody, but this, ha this is in Vermont, and this is what you can have. The, the, the Cemetery Association could not stop this from happening. <laughs> the guy's still alive, by the way. <laughs> I apparently did not have a good experience. Um, so, and the other, on the other side of the stone, it says he was, you know, a veteran, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if the cemetery associate would not approve of it, they wouldn't do it for him, they could not stop it. So, my, again, if you are involved in active cemeteries, check your rules because 
How would you like to have the plot across from that for the rest of your life? <laughs> I guess he didn't have a great time with his marriage, apparently. Uh, again, the thing was, we talked about history, Linden and Lindenville. This guy was an atheist. He believed that they, and I think they tried to, so he, he basically, in his epitaph, saying that, you know, that the reason we have all the problems in life is because of religion, but he made sure it was carved in so deep you couldn't sand it off. Good. These are some stones around Vermont. Do you know the inventor of clothespins in, in Vermont? Yeah. Ash. <laughs> Bent. <laughs> Family nicknames, uh, that little Fanny, rest of eternity, you're going to be called little Fanny, okay? <laughs> See, disco's not really dead. Now, all kidding aside, what somebody's made a living at now is that if you wish to be, have a virtual cemetery, you can pay to have your cemetery on a virtual cemetery online. I don't, I guess you have to worry about watering flowers that way. Died for not forwarding the text message to 10 people. <laughs> Owen Moore gone away, owing more than he could pay. My wife loves this one. This is a spot, the sweetest I've seen in my life, where it raises my flowers and covers my wife. No. Bless my eyes, here I lie in a sad pickle. He was killed by an icicle, by the way. Practical, practical Joker's Perpetual Memorial. Gotcha. <laughs> I never felt so alive. The dead real estate market, new lots available. So I guess a family plot isn't always a good idea. I'm with stupid. <laughs> I did this for my father, put it on my resume. Yeah, keep going. My, my son just got married to Wistock Inn last week, so that's him on the left. Yeah, my other son, wasn't he thrilled to be there and help me? <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. So. Now, you have any questions or anything? I'll be happy to entertain. Can you speak to some unusual locations for cemeteries in Vermont? Well, the first hole, the Berry Golf Course, is a burial. Um, there's there, there's um, several. I get calls from middle of the woods, different places that. Uh, uh, usually they're like in the middle of nowhere, but Vermont, usually what they did was they put, put, put cemeteries where they didn't want to hay, where the cows wouldn't get at them, but uh, the ones that I've seen that are unusual have been way out in the middle of the woods that you have to tramp to, and, and the, the community's long, long been dissolved, and you have, let there be light. And the, uh, and the, but the cemeteries are still there. So that's, what's, that's the only thing that's left is the cellar holes in the cemeteries. What are the stones made of that not marble and not granite, the older stones? Slate. slate. Slate will, again, slate is a great resource. You go down to Boston, look at the old burial grounds down there. They're all made out of slate. For 1600, slate is a much harder stone and um, will keep a lot better. Um, but uh, usually what, it depends on where community you're at. Like if you're in the Pulteney area, there's a lot of slate stones because the slate mills or slate quarries. In Rutland, in Proctor, the Marble Valley, the marble quarries are all marble. Uh, up here, I mean, you have a mixture of everything, but if it's, a lot of times it depends on how much money you had. A lot of the stones were bought through Sears and Roebuck catalogs. Now, when I talk to schools now, I can't use Sears and Roebuck catalog. I have to say Amazon.com of their time because they don't get it. But so, I mean, often how much money you had. And, and a lot of the carvers, I mean, a lot of times you walk into some of the carvers, you'll see on the bottom right, you'll see the, uh, how much the stone costs. What better way to advertise, you know, does that make sense? Okay. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hope we can both move on. We have uh, refreshments in the back. Um, I'm sure if you have anything you'd like to talk to Tom about, he has a lot of stuff here on the table. Um, check out the website for for the organization. It's a great website. I've, I've looked at it. And also check out the Bridgewater Historical Society website. We have all of our 12 uh, cemeteries are on there. Um,
with the information also. So thank you everyone for coming. Again, if you haven't signed our sign-in sheet, we'd appreciate it if you would. And also, um, there's schedule for the rest of our programs. Jeanette has them that if you haven't gotten one of those too. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it.